Hey guys, it's Nathan with Fish ATX, and today I'm going to show you how to turn this normal paddle board into this a inflatable paddle board fishing machine. In today's video, I'm going to go over how I converted just a plain inflatable paddleboard into a um, a little fishing paddleboard machine. Um, I love taking the paddleboard out, and I'm excited to kind of just go over everything and just show you what I prefer to have on my paddleboard, um, pros and cons of paddleboard fishing, and uh, just kind of an overview. And I'll also include some clips on the water. I have a kayak. Um, I have a native Slayer, it's a lot of fun to take out, pedal drive, but sometimes I just want something that's less heavy, something that's easy to transport. Some of these places I fish, like creeks and small rivers and stuff like that, are hard to access. This thing, super light, I can just carry it, um, I can even put my kayak cart wheels on it. And uh, roll it down, it's super easy. I don't break my back trying to get into the water, and it is a lot of fun to fish on. So, for this video, I'm gonna break down just exactly what I've done to this, this paddle board. This is a tequila 512 paddle board. It's uh, you know, nothing, it's not made for fishing specifically. These are actually really good quality too. Um, I think it retails for about 500 bucks, which is a pretty normal price for this type of size of paddle board um, inflatable. Um, you know, it comes with just the basic, you know, just some tie downs, grip on the paddle, paddle board, comes with the little skeg that goes in the back. And so what I've done, actually I put a seat for my Pelican kayak and uh, just used bungee cords to strap this in. I don't always put the seat in there, but right now it's pretty cold, so I like to be sitting off a little bit off the board because it's, you know, it's dead of winter right now, so if I'm out on the board, I don't want to be, you know, getting super soaked. Uh, so this is nice, and it actually helps my back a lot. So the key to turning any paddleboard into like a fishing paddleboard is really just making sure you have the right equipment and using a lot of bungee cords and tie downs. I literally have everything on this paddleboard strapped to it. And, um, you know, in case for some reason it does a drop something or whatever, I don't have to go swim to get it. Well, forbid I f ever flip, which I have never done. Knock on wood, I don't, it doesn't happen. But if it does happen, it will all stay with the board. Um, and which I really feel confident and, you know, safe doing because I know I'm not going to really lose anything. Um, I'll go through everything in this video in detail with uh, close ups. But just to kind of just go overview really quick, I have my Ego uh, floating net that is clipped to, to this uh, center strap here. Also on the center strap, I have my Yak Attack uh, paddle leash to my paddle, which is uh, the Angler CF from Fildenstrom. I'll uh, put a link to this one and also one that's very, very similar on Amazon that um, I know a friend has. I'll put that in the bio. Along with everything else on this, this paddle board, check the description section below uh, on this video. I'll have links. I'm an Amazon associate, so I do get a small commission off of you know sales from there. We really appreciate any of your support. And uh, it makes it easier just to you know check out the equipment. You don't have to buy it um, just to kind of see exactly what I'm using. So check out the description section um, whenever you want to see any of these items. So over the seat, um, I just connected it with bungee cords uh, on each side. It's actually really stuck on there and stable. Here we have the Plano crate. I, I mean, if you've seen my other videos, uh, I use this on my native, I use it on my Pelican. This setup is just like my favorite. Um, the, really the only thing that I've modified for this is I don't have an attachment like I do on my kayak for the um, 
GoPro pole, but I put the pole in one of the um, rod holders, just stuffed like a towel in there just to keep it stable. I taped it last time just to keep, make sure it doesn't swivel or anything, but it's, uh, it's really stuck in there. And uh, this is the Railblazer, I think it's called the R-Lock system. I've been using this ever since I had a kayak, my first kayak. It's, uh, it's great, it's easy to, to attach and unattach to change your GoPro batteries and all that stuff. So I really like this. I might actually add another one to, to make it a little higher because on the paddle board, you know, it's all kind of close up. The view from the, the GoPro is kind of close to my head, so I'm going to try to find something to get a little more like a bird's eye view of what I'm doing, and, um, fishing and stuff like that. Okay, I just wanted to show the modification I made since I made the original footage for this video. Um, I actually drilled a hole into this um, rod holder and this knob and part came with the uh, Railblazer R-Lock 600 uh, GoPro mount. And so I literally just drilled a hole just big enough to where I can screw this to attach the other side. Super stable now and it sits higher. So I have a better view from top. So this is the newest modification. And here is the braided line that I tie to the crate. And I bring this up here and I tie it to the GoPro that's up here. And that way, if this does, if I'm changing batteries or whatever, and this does happen to fall, I have that line tied to it. So in, on the crate here, um, this is just a normal crate that I got from work, but inside is the Plano Weekender bag. Uh, it's a 3600. It is made to fit into just any kind of crate and it gives you so many possibilities for tackle. Um, also added a Getty dry bag on here. And this just kind of, when I keep my keys, uh, wallet and whatever, you know, sunscreen or whatever I need in there. With this bag, you can fit three to four plastic um, lure boxes. And then also have like hooks and everything in the inside. It's where I put soft plastics. I have a little cooler, I actually just put it right inside there. Very nice setup just to have everything I need. I have Rogue Gear sells these um, tethers. So I have this tether, which you know has line cutters, pliers, whatever. I put this under my seat. We'll attach it to my crate. Um, I have more line cutters right here. These things are awesome. The boomerang tool is what it's called. It's, it's, it cuts through grain like butter. Another Rogue product, it's hard to see up here. I'll do a close up, but just a, just a strap. I don't know how much you can see, but there's just a ring on the front of this paddle board. Some of them have handles, but this one just has a ring. So I got this Rogue strap and uh, it's easy just to pull. Like if I'm you know going through super shallow water, want to pull through water, or if I'm pulling it with the kayak or that strap came in handy. So I added another, another one that's just like a more basic strap on the back, because on the back of this pack is also just a ring. Um, so these road straps will really help to be able to carry it. You know, I can lift from here and strap and literally just lift this whole thing up um, and just put it in the water if I need to, or just slide it in. Also by Rogue, this has saved my phone so many times. It's the Rogue phone tether. Uh, it comes with a little bungee. I bought an extension bungee here. Literally thought I lost it and it was just hanging in the water with this. Uh, one time I was unloading this and I flipped it in the creek. Phone tether, saved my phone again. Um, can't recommend this enough. I think it's like under $20. Very, very good buy. Okay, so here's that Rogue handle I was telling you about. It connects to this O-ring or anywhere on your onboard kayak. Have the ego net, which I said, it's attached right here to this um, strap and tether that goes to the paddle. I have the seat, which is bungee corded, each side. Here's that other rogue um, tether for my pliers and everything. Back here. My phone tether attached to the crate, the Yeti bag, inside the planer. 
plenty of room for soft plastics, um, a little cooler like I bring. Hard boxes go inside. I have this one full of swim baits. On the back here, I just zip tied uh, rod holders to the back. It's held up you know, this entire time, probably five years. No issues. I have my GoPro pole in one of them. You can also, I'll probably attach another one on the side so I can actually use this uh, for another pole because I have way too much gear. And, you know, sunglass holder. You don't really do anything to these crates with clips and straps and everything. I usually keep my uh, catch board. This was uh, from fishing online. I usually will strap it to, to, you know, underneath here, sticking out like that. And uh, that stays there. They also have floating ones that are really nice that I, I use those too as well. Underneath the skeg. This one, I'm gonna be honest, is not the easiest to attach if you're trying to attach it like while you're out already. There's some that are easier to attach, but this one has like a screw that you have to screw like a nut. Keeps it in place. There are easier skegs but this one, you know, it's not a deal breaker. I still, still get it done every single time. Just a little tricky if it's cold outside. Okay, so pros and cons of paddleboard fishing. Um, one of the biggest things, super light. This board, I think alone weighs like 25 pounds. I would say it's probably what a lot of the inflatables weigh. Um, with all the gear, I can still lift it really easily. what I like. It's just, it's easy to access, you know, those tight cr creek and river spots that like are hard to reach, which are some of the, some of the times the best places to go. Here she is. You can just inflate it wherever you want. If you don't have a truck, that's another big thing. Um, I know some friends that don't have uh, trucks to load a kayak in. This thing literally curls up into a bag that has a roller. Um, so it's really easy just to take everything in your car and get out on the water. It's actually really stable. Um, I don't really know the width. I would say probably between around 36 inches. Um, but it is stable enough for me to stand up on. You just have to have like decent balance, um, but I, I do it. It's a good way to stretch your legs. I don't feel like I'm ever like in fear of flipping, which is uh, was my biggest fear when I was thinking about getting a paddleboard for fishing, you know, losing all my gear. But you know, these inflatables. I mean, I've been fishing for a couple years now, and I really enjoy it. One of the great things about these paddleboards too is they're you know, not super expensive. Some of the kayaks are getting outrageously pricey now these days. So, you know, you can pick these up for around 500. There's cheaper ones. There's also a lot more expensive ones. I've seen some of the boat boards that are like made for fishing, which are really cool. Um, you know, those that are specifically made for fishing are going to be paying a higher price. As far as comms go, I would say it doesn't handle wind very well. Um, I was out the other day, it was super windy and you're just getting blown everywhere. suggest using an anchor. This is the best anchor. Um, I've had this one for a while. It does the job really well. It's a uh, three pounds or something like that. And it'll hold my heavy kayak and high winds. So um, I'll have a link for this down below. Um, another con would be, depending on how stable you want it, um, something like this, an inflatable, you know, as I said earlier, you can stand, you can fish on it, but if you want something super stable to where you're not ever in fear of flipping over, if you're like in big waves in the lake, I would suggest a bigger, wider paddleboard. This one's a little under 11 feet, or you can do a non-inflatable, but if you want pure stability, I would suggest looking at some kayaks. But I feel very safe on this thing. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about um, things I left out, if you have any questions about this board or other boards, any of the equipment, feel free to give me a comment. Um, I'll respond as quick as I can. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm coming out with a review of this specific board soon. So that'll be my next video um, that's gonna come out most likely. And uh, I'm gonna just keep, on, keep on going from there. But yeah, I appreciate y'all watching and uh, until next time. Dude, yeah, check that out, guys. That Savage Gear glide. There, that's what I wanted right there. It's a releaser.